Freedom Diggers Metal Detecting. Jim coming at you again. New Year's Eve 2022. I'll tell you what, I'm ready for 2022. Let's jump right into it here. First, I'm going to ask you if you haven't subscribed to my channel, subscribe so you don't miss any of the great metal detecting tips and tricks and other related nonsense that I'll be putting out to see us through this winter season. All right, let's go right at here. So what I have here is the part of the subject of what I'm going to talk about today, and that's falsing, false signals on your metal detector. You're out, you're swinging, and it's just going beep boop, beep boop, boop, boop beep boop, boop. You know, it's driving you nuts. Well, I'm going to show you a few reasons why that happens right off the bat and i tell people this all the time on different groups and forums that i'm in when they complain about this problem it's usually someone that's new at it and they just set up their machine your coil wire wrap okay it's important that your coil wire be wrapped neatly not like this there's a few things wrong here first right off the bat see where this first loop is going it's going behind the front rod. If you have it like that, it's awfully close to that coil and that can cause falsing, especially on more sensitive machines. Um, you want to run it around the front and I'll show you that in a minute. Also, you want your wire nice and tight. You want it to go around nice and tight all the way up to the control box. When you swing this with it loose like this, that coil wire is going to bounce around and it's going to cause false signals. Another thing here, at your control box, make sure your connection's tight. These things loosen up from time to time, and if this gets loose, it's just like any other electrical device. It's not going to make good contact, and it's going to move a little bit too. So make sure that's tight. A decent set of batteries also very important a lot of people like to buy the dollar store batteries and they do quite well with them personally i have found dollar store batteries right out of the box to be down a little bit on voltage like maybe 0.2 of a volt 0.1 doesn't sound like much but when you're running eight batteries like i am that adds up even four batteries it adds up this wouldn't be a worry if you have a machine with a rechargeable battery, but a lot of us are out there with machines that still use double A's. Personally, I like the Energizer Max. Um, any of the better brands, you know, Energizer Duracell, they seem to last me a long time. I get just about an entire season out of a set of batteries, and uh, I go out whenever I have the opportunity. So, good set of batteries. These here are actually my last hunt, which was like maybe three weeks ago or so, the battery bar indicator dropped one bar. So that's when I take them out. I want full bars all the way. All right, so these batteries are gonna come out and they'll be used for remote controls pretty soon here because winter. So we'll set this aside. And I'm gonna show you the proper deal here with the coil wrap. This is Nicole's Pink MX-7, which she loves mm -hmm. almost as much as she loves me. Maybe? Nope. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, if you'll see, this one, coil wires going around the front of the rod. Nice and tightly wrapped all the way up to the control box. Um, the White's machines came with uh, these clips that are really nice to help hold the wire in place. You can still get these too, you look around, and they'll fit just about any detector rod. So, you got one down low and one up high on here. And it's important to leave enough slack so that when you set the machine down, if it does this, it's not gonna put stress. Also, if you're out, swinging it and you happen to adjust the coil let's say you're on a sledding hill and you want to do a little bit more angle you've got enough slack you don't want to pull your connection out of your coil and then you end up having to buy a new coil so we'll set this aside i'll show you one more thing 
your coil cover. Dirt, grass, water, sand, all kinds of stuff gets into these coil covers. And if you get enough of it in there, this is pretty clean because I clean mine out regularly. But if you get enough in there, I've actually seen people, there's like mud in there. That's going to cause falsing. It can also cost you depth. It's going to interfere with the signal. So you want to clean the coil cover. You want to clean the coil too. A lot of these coils have these voids in here. And uh, you're going to get mud in there, grass in there. And if it gets a little moisture in there, it's just going to cause you all kinds of nightmares. Instability, falsing. So, you know, have you ever gone into your laundry basket of dirty clothes and pulled something out of there because it was like the cleanest thing that was in there? And never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Anyways, so that's about it. A um, little, little bit of tips and tricks for metal detecting, treasure hunting. If you're out and you're having falsing issues, these are some of the things that you can check that might solve a problem for you. I hope that you guys all have a great new year and lots of success in metal detecting. And remember, when you're out, dig responsibly so that we can preserve our rights as hobbyists. And always dig for your guy. Thanks a lot, everybody. We'll see you on the next one.